Good evening and welcome everyone to tonight's May USD 409 board meeting. I'd like to call the meeting to order and starting off with a very special happy teacher appreciation week to all you t wonderful teachers of USD 409. Please know how very much we appreciate you, depend on you, and we see you out there changing lives every day. So thank you very much for all you do. We celebrate you. First, our ordering and approval of tonight's agenda is on order, so can I have a motion, please, for that? So moved. Thank you, Stephanie. A second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you so much. Passes unanimously. First up tonight is our special education department update, and that is with Nicole Honeywell. Thank you. Thank you. All right, this is so Dr. Nugent and I had the opportunity a couple of weeks ago to share some information about our special education department with a group called BOLD. So those are leaders who are nominated across the state by KASB, and they go around and see different programs. So it was really neat to get to share our program with them and get to brag about our people. So tonight I'm just going to share kind of the number of students that we serve, staffing, Really excited to share our district annual performance report, compliance update, professional development, and opportunities for growth. So this is just taking a look at special education by the numbers in our district. And on the bottom is 2018-19 going all the way up. And you'll see on the left-hand side, total enrollment of students in general. And then to the right, students with disabilities. And then to the far right, also gifted. Because in Kansas, we do include gifted within special education. Then, of course, all of our services for um, our little ones, infant toddler, child care centers, Trinity Lutheran, St. Ben's, Moore Hill Mount Academy. It really is a ginormous feat to serve all of those um, organizations. So 25 to 27 percent of our population is on an IEP. That's a large amount. The state average right now is around 16 to 17 percent. So we have a large amount of kids with needs, hence um, some great providers that we have to, to fill those needs. This is what our special education teaching positions look like. This doesn't mean these are all filled. The majority are, but these are the, the positions that we have. So we have 17 what we would refer to as high incidence special education teachers. Those um, at the elementary school, that looks like one per grade level, which is actually really unique. Not a lot of places have that. Same with the middle school. Then we also have low incidence teachers who provide services for our kids with more extensive support needs. And then the elementary actually has an additional two teachers specific to kids with behavior support needs. Preschool, we do have two early childhood special education positions. And then at Central, we've got an elementary special education teacher and a secondary special education teacher. The high school's a little different. They divide up by content area. So whichever special education teacher feels the most strong in ELA, they co-teach in those areas. So they, that's how they divide up with kids versus per grade level. Then our related service providers for occupational therapy, we have a, a half-time OT, which is unique to have your own employee that's an OT. And then we have a full-time CODA, so that would be a certified assistant. And any of these assistants on here do have to have a bachelor's degree as well as a certificate in their field. So that's a, a high level of certification. Speech and language, currently we have two full-time SLPs that are our own and one full-time SLP assistant. And then we have some contracted services this year. So a virtual speech path, as well as a para, full-time SLP and full-time SLPA. Those are all contracted. And the difference between contracted and having our own is, is a pretty significant dollar amount there. Physical therapy, we do have a full-time PTA. So she also provides some support for adaptive PE and then some transition services for kids at the high school. And then a contracted PT, eight to 16 hours per month. And right now, we're excited to share that we're slated to have just one contracted position, and that's just with our physical therapist. So that's pretty huge to have that many of our own employees. Very exciting. So let's talk about accountability measures. So there are lots of different ways we're held accountable, education in general, but special education just adds a lot of different levels because it is federal law that we meet the needs of kids with disabilities. So quick history lesson, IDEA is our federal law for special education within schools. Prior to 1975, districts could say, sorry, we're not going to serve you because your child had special needs. 
That's not the case anymore. So we have specific requirements that we have to follow in order to give every kid what's referred to as a free, appropriate public education. If you read any um, legislation or um, lawsuits, they'll call that FAPE. This does include those related services. This really emphasizes those rights and protections so that parents have a voice in every step of the process, and it ensures that students with disabilities make progress in school. So anytime we have federal law, lots of accountability to make sure we're doing what we need to do. So there's, these are just a few of the areas that we're held accountable for. And this is mostly in terms of timelines and paperwork. But we are held accountable for this every year, as well as the state. So we report to the state, state reports to the federal government, all of these different areas. And I'm excited to share that for the first time since 2017, we met accountability in those areas. So this is a banner that we'll get to put on our website as well as um, in any different newsletters that we send. So that's exciting. It's something to show that reflects the services that we're giving to kids are at a high level. Digging a little bit into those indicators, indicator five is what we call least restrictive environment. So this is looking at how much time a student who's on an IEP spends in that general education classroom, because we know that's the best place for them to be. That way they have exposure to that content area teacher, they can be around typically developing peers, and that's what fits with our inclusion model at our school. So indicator 5A measures which kids with disabilities are in that classroom 80% or more of their day. That's really the, the goal, 80% or more of the day. And then which kids are going to need some more extensive support and are in that classroom 40% or more of the day. So here's a trend analysis. We went back all the way to 2014. That first area, indicator 5A, remember that we want that, we want kids to be in the classroom 80% or more of the day, so that's showing where we were. That middle one, those are our kids who probably have more extensive needs, so they're gonna be in the classroom about 40% of the time. And then the far right, those are kids who might need a separate facility, which does include central. So taking a look at the growth that we've had over time, in federal fiscal year 2021, 79.29% of all kids on an IEP in our district were in that gen ed classroom 80% or more of their day. So that's pretty darn high. We beat the state average, which was 70. And to go from 56 and make that jump was, was huge. And then our number over here in the middle, looking at kids with more significant needs being included in the classroom, Going from six to, to 3.8 is a pretty large change when you're talking small percentages like that. So all of that compliance measures, that's, these are who I would call the MV, MVPs in that area. So our school psych team, our special ed teachers, related service providers, and then our MIS clerk. They make sure we get all of our paperwork done in the time it has to be done with every signature where it needs to be down to the last T and I, T crossed and I dotted. For professional development, one of the things that I love about having a single district special education model is that all of our staff get the high quality professional development alongside the general education staff. Some places you go, that's really separate, but we're together. So all staff are getting that visible learning instruction, co-teaching and inclusion, and then those building student intervention teams focusing on SEL this coming year. Then in addition, our special ed providers have really been working with assistive technology. So students who are nonverbal, maybe they use an iPad and a picture communication system. We even have um, students who use more sophisticated devices like eye gaze, so really high tech ways that they can communicate. Post-secondary transition services, really making sure when kids leave high school, they're ready for that next step. That all ties right in with the IPS that we're working on for every student. We've reached out to TASN for a lot of support. That's free through the, through the state, and they've come in and worked with different kids. And then we'll, start our, we'll have our third annual special ed summit this summer. That's when all special education staff come together for professional development, and that will be open to actually all staff this year so they can learn right alongside us. So opportunities for growth, even though we've made changes, we know that we can still improve and get better. So we have purchased a curriculum for our students who have more extensive needs, one that's actually evidence-based, and that's going to really help as we're showing parents progress throughout the year. That's going to be a great resource. We have a special ed parent advisory council that started last year. They will continue to meet. Working on early childhood inclusion opportunities and then outcomes. Secondary transition, making sure we're meeting all the compliance areas there. And then continued PD for all staff, because we know that all kids are our kids because all students are general education students first. 
And that's it, unless you have questions for our update. All right, this is a pretty brief update tonight. I'm not going to throw a presentation up on the board, but just wanted to fill you in that I have uh, been able to meet with all the schools now and all certified staff. Um, because of the um, allowing students to be released three days early, um, one of those days, um, it's either Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. I can't even remember. I don't have it in front of me. I'll offer one more presentation for anyone who may have missed um, the bond update presentation, or any classified staff who wants to attend as well. Um, I've made it to Rotary, um, the Retired Teachers Association, a group of business leaders, and then in June I will be hitting Kiwanis. I joke that I'm going to get in front of the YMCA swim ladies uh, one morning this summer with some donuts and coffee so I can get them the information. And then tonight you'll see um, in the consent agenda that um, we will have the DLR group who presented um, early on in a work session. And this will give them to go the go ahead to really start evaluating facilities. This week, a very short survey went out to all district staff, just if they could choose the things that most uh, they would most desire for improvements or ideas. Um, and then as soon as we get um, some of our facilities accountability reports, we'll be getting surveys out to the entire community. Um, Monday minutes should start going out in June also to give information about the upcoming bond. But um, we are really on track to, to have some good information so we can start making some decisions uh, mid-summer to right when school gets back in August. Any questions about that? The feedback um, from the, the public places I've been to, the Retired Teachers Association, the Rotary, been very positive. So Good. looking forward to it. Yeah, that's great. Let me get my mic back on. This is this time in our meeting set aside for public comment, so we do have one tonight. The board appreciates you taking your time to come talk to us about USD 409 policies and procedures. We do adhere to certain guidelines during the comments that include the following. We ask that you sign in. We impose a three-minute time limit, and we ask that groups with the same interest uh, appoint a spokesperson, but there's only one uh, person tonight. So comments shall be limited to issues and not personalities. It's not an appropriate time or place to make comments of a personnel nature about any district employee or anyone else. Persons making those comments that violate the Privacy Act of district employees will be asked to terminate their remarks. And we will refer you, your issue or concerns to our administration. Um, Genevieve Elias, we'd love to have you come to the mic, please. Hi. I'm a mother of many in the district. <laughs> oh, oh. Okay. I have six, five or not. Five are in this district. I have one somewhere else. Um, and that's just the ones that are still here. I've got five that are grown. <laughs> so last Friday, we had an issue at the high school. Uh, there was an active shooting text message that had been released with media. And so when I called Miss Warren to see what was going on, and I'm texting multiple children because I'm a mom of many, and I'm getting um, reports that children are being released from the school. There's a lockdown. There's not a lockdown. There's a lot of confusion on what kind of lockdown we were in, if we were going to have one. Um, so I instructed my children. I was like, okay, lock the window, lock the door, stay quiet, turn off your phones, and wait for it to be considered all clear. This is the national standard. This is what you do during a school shooting. Um, what was brought to my attention was there were school administrative people that were having other teachers unlock the doors. They were saying, well, we're not really in that kind of a lockdown. Well, what kind of a lockdown are we in? And so what are we doing as a district to protect our children? Because the majority of active shooting happens before the police or first responders ever show up. It's over. So our first responders are our teachers. They're our administratives. 
And when I call the high school to find out what's going on and what was the plan, there isn't one. Or there was one and we trained a year ago for it. So the average drills um, for the state of Kansas high schools are four fire drills, three crisis drills, two tornado drills at a minimum. When is the last time that we had an active shooter drill in our schools? And with everything going on right now, that's pretty important. And not only that, even after it was over with, there wasn't the emotional, social support from administrators, teachers, um, the social workers weren't available for children to talk to. There were too many kids that had too many things going on. What do we have in place for a crisis? Emotionally, mentally, physically for our kids. Um, you know, when I asked that administrator, why did you unlock the door? Why did you say it was okay? She said, well, we were in a medical lockdown, not a, not really this, and we'd had two lockdowns the same day. Well, okay, but what, what is it? Is it a code silver? Is it a code black? Is it a code red? What are the code colors for this? They didn't know. Hospitals have code colors. Daycares have co code colors. Walmart has code colors. Do we not have them in our schools? I don't know. Um, so all the questions I was asking, I didn't get answers for, so I'm here tonight because I want those answers. When I'm texting my child, stay, you know, if they can't see you, they don't shoot you, stay quiet, turn your phone off, and an entire classroom is singing chorus music, <laughs> and she's begging her, her classmates to stay quiet, and the teacher doesn't know what to do, what do we do? That's our alarm for the three minutes, but thank you for bringing this to our attention. We're definitely going to have administration reach out to you. I do know we use the ALICE, the A-L-I-C-E. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we use code colors, but uh, I will definitely get with you. Okay, I appreciate it. And then just, I know I'm almost up, but my last, um, my last comment on that was um, Holly Carpenter. It's a friend of mine. Also an older student and an older sibling of one of the children that were murdered in Columbine. I personally know children that were in that first shooting. And I saw as much disorganization, chaos, and scared and confused on Friday that I saw then. Okay. Which shall get back with you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is our, we need the approval for tonight's consent agenda as presented. May I have a motion for that, please? Move that we accept. I move that we accept the consent agenda as presented. May I have a second, please? I'll second. Thank you, Sally. Any discussion on anything? Seeing none, all in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you so much. It passes unanimously. Tonight, our first action item is to revise and reaffirm the board policies uh, from IBGA to IHF. No, maybe that's not. Yeah, that is. Those are the ones. And with Miss Honeywell, we're going to visit about that. Yep, so these are the policies, and none of those had revisions except for we had a catch on our graduation requirements. We still needed to remove that old language of mm -hmm. RSVP and change that to IPS and portfolio. So that was updated in two different places. And then the rest of the policies were just reaffirmed. Mm -hmm. So I'd entertain a motion for the approval of those board policies as presented. I move to reaffirm the DOE policies IBGA through IHF as presented. May I have a second? Thank you, Sally. Any discussion on those? Seeing none, all in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you so much. It passes unanimously. Tonight, we're going to approve the republishing of USD 409 Atchison Public Schools budget. And did you or Lori want to visit about that? Lori, do you want to come and visit with us a second, please? Yes. Hello. Um, at the beginning of this school year, we always budget for what we think we will get for FTE for different areas. For example, at risk, uh, vocational, bilingual, transportation. And then throughout the year, KSD comes in and does an audit. Usually when we prepare the budget, we try to give us a little leeway 
and how much we will get for FTE. So we budget for five and let's say we might get seven. It differs for each option that we have on the form 150. However, this year we did not estimate high enough, which is good news, I guess, in the fact that we get additional money from the state. So we have to republish the budget in order to get those additional funds from the state. It is coming in state aid. This does not affect our mill levy, our taxpayers, anything like that. It is just so we can get our additional state aid on those FTE that was audited this year. We did this once about five, six, seven years ago. Doesn't take much. Just got to put a notice in the paper and then let KSD know that we're publishing the budget, which I've already done. So is there any questions, concerns about this process? We will have a budget hearing. We have to have an official budget hearing again since we are amending the budget. And that will be at our June meeting five minutes before the start of our regular, regularly scheduled meeting at 6. Okay. So we need to be here at 555. Ready please. for 555. Okay. Any questions? All right. Thanks. Nope. I'd entertain a motion for that, please. I'll second. Did you make the motion? Oh. <laughs> you want to make the motion? Yeah. Why don't you make the motion? <laughs> I move that we um, approve the uh, republishing of the USC yes. 409 Atchison Public Schools budget. Yep. And now a second. I'll second. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you so much. It passes unanimously. Next, our handbooks are up for review. And this is always a really good time to dive into all the handbooks. And I'm excited to hear from Nicole about our uh, handbooks and the changes, possibly. Yep, it's handbook time. So the, the good news is we don't have a lot of changes. So what I'll do tonight is just highlight them for you. Mm -hmm. And then you can take a nice long look over the next month or so. But just a reminder of those formatting, anything that we're proposing to remove, you're going to see it struck, a strike through, and then it'll be grayed out. Anything we're proposing to add is highlighted. That way it makes it nice and transparent. So the handbooks that we have ready for today are the District Student Family Handbook, Every School Buildings Handbook, Certified and Classified Staff Handbook, Administrator Personnel Handbook, and then District Activities and Athletics. And just to give you some background, each building meets with their building leadership team to go over the handbooks. We really start this discussion in January, February, and then as a staff, they, as a leadership team, they look at that and talk about if there's anything that needs to be changed. The teams take that, the leaders take that back to their teams. There's a, a lot of feedback that goes into it. So these are updates that are happening to all handbooks. They're pretty minor. We no longer use School Messenger. We now use Bright Arrow, which is great. That just means we have to change that language in all of our handbooks. For report cards, those are now emailed home. So that change was made across the board. Transportation Department is no longer first student, so we just changed that language. And they actually have a handbook ready that we'll have ready for you to preview um, and put in place iPads, there's been a change, so we're going to keep those at school for students in grades K through 8th. Uh, middle school students, we're taking them, and just the amount of damages that were happening has been too high, so we're going to keep those for use in the classroom. So that was changed in all the handbooks as well. Visitors, you know, we have our new IdentiKid system, so we changed, just added that language in our procedures for visitors across the board. Can I ask a question? Of course. On that. On the uh, school messenger to Bright Arrow, was school messenger where parents had to sign up to get notifications, did it automatically transfer over to? Yeah, this system is actually better because it pulls directly from PowerSchool. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they didn't have to sign up again Yeah, they probably did have to sign up again, so there was some fall off and an opt in for that. And then when enrollment starts in July, that'll be very much pushed out. So hopefully we'll get more people on to um, Bright Arrow. Okay. And then the last piece that you won't see in there quite yet, we'll have an updated organizational chart and then I'll have our new administrative personnel in there. <clears throat> 
Another school building handbook change that we made within all of the all of the discipline grids, we've separated out tobacco use versus vape because there might be an instance where you have a vape that has something in it that's not tobacco. And if you're looking at handling that situation, we want to make sure that's very clear as our administrators are proceeding with that. And then in addition, we have our district placement team that meets every month to talk about transitions to and from Central. And that's also the place where we make any considerations if someone wants to um, skip a grade or retain a grade. So those requests come to that group. So just updated that language to match our current practice. So now we'll talk about each individual building handbook change. And again, there are very few. So at Atchison Elementary, they've added their language on their Phoenix 5. Okay, and then their cute Phoenix Phoebe. And then they've just added to their discipline grid the situation of a verbal threat and the definition that that would, that would match with that. So if a student intentionally threatens a peer or staff member to inflict physical harm, and again, that will just help them as they're addressing discipline situations specifically. Atchison Middle School added a specific threat for a school violence threat. There's a specific definition there so that as they're communicating with students and parents, that's very clear. And then they also have their Boys Town <laughs> SEL program that they spoke with you about a couple months ago, so they've added that to the handbook. For the high school, they've added some information about attendance requirements and weekend activities. Previously, it just referred to dances, but that really needs to be all-encompassing. They've changed Zello to Naviance because that matches the IPS program that they're using. An update to class assignments or changes and what, what um, the steps that parents or students need to follow there. Added that class fees must be paid in order to purchase tickets for dances. And then an appeal process for National Honor Society. For Central, updated the language about that process that we have in place for the district placement team when, when we're transitioning students to or from. And then Zello and Naviance as well. So you'll see all of those as you go through the handbooks, but that's just a summary of any of the changes. Taking a look at the classified handbook, so some updates to leave provisions. So any planned leave for a classified staff member that's beyond three days is going to need pre-approval by the superintendent or designee at least one week in advance of requested leave. We had a procedure in place for certified staff, but just nothing in writing for classified. So this is just making that a little more clear. And then no personal leave may be used during the last 30 days of employment with the district. So we make sure we have our people here working with kids. And then I just wanted to point out that we do have those salary schedules on pages 42 and 43 that we added last year per your approval. We do have a meeting tomorrow, and so those are subject to change. So just to alert you of that. Also, we've added classified hourly employee rates. So this has actually been in place this year, which was really great. So if we have a classified staff member come in, we know exactly where they'll fall on the pay scale, on the wage scale, before it was a little bit all over the place. So this includes our employees such as paras, CNA, CMA, a custodian, a secretary, food service employees, and then of course adding in our bus driver and mechanics. So I know that's really, really small, but that's located on page 44, but it's the same idea as our teacher salary schedule. We look at how many years, and then they always know that they'll be able to go down that, down that um, column so that they can receive a raise. Then these changes will go into our certified and our admin personnel handbook, and these are just reflecting current practice. So this first part I know Jackie leads our PDC committee, which has to do with professional development, and teachers don't really have a professional development plan on file within their PDP toolbox, but they have that within their evaluation system as they're setting goals each year. So just another change to fit our current practice. And then this is just um, a little blurb that really matches our expectations for professional development. And it talks about the process that employees would go through if they want to attend a professional development event. This has been our practice for the 18 years that I've been here. So again, it's just really putting that in writing. For P card use, we just added that um, that Kansas tax exemption number is on there. So we ask that all of our employees get their purchases tax exempt. Again, that's always been in place. Now we're just adding that in writing. 
activities handbook, we've just updated that we have a district activities director as well as contact information there. And then due to the AMS schedule change, their information will actually match the high school information in terms of how many classes they need to pass in order to participate the following year. So middle school used to need to pass five because of the way their schedule was. Now it will directly mirror the high school. So they must pass six classes in a semester in order to participate the next year. So then taking a look at the district student family handbook, the typical changes like updated school calendar, building schedules, early release dates, and then any changes in administrative personnel. Then we have a special announcement. Yeah. We uh, get to take out lunch prices for next year. I get to turn on my, we get to take out lunch prices for next year. We have applied for and received free lunch and breakfast for all students next Yay. year. So that is super exciting. That's but awesome. I will say that one of the changes will be, um, remember, we get at-risk money based on free and reduced lunch status. And during COVID, when there wasn't free and reduced lunch status, that was then based on a family um, household economic survey. So that will still be required, that household economic survey. And that will be necessary for students who uh, used to use their free and reduced lunch forms in order to get reduced or free fees or iPad uses. So um, that will just transfer over to the household economic survey. But we are pumped. We just got that news. I think we celebrated that news last week. Uh, free breakfast and lunch for all. We, we made it by the skin of our teeth, but it's the best news we could have received. So super excited about that. Awesome. That's fantastic. Is that for one year? It is for one year, but probably based on our household economic survey um, and, and the input we get on that, it, it could be for us a few years down the road. So we'll end on that positive note, unless you have yes. any questions regarding handbooks. I know you'll be busy reading those and looking through those. So if anything pops up, yeah. just reach out to Dr. Nugent or I. Yeah. Yep. We have a month to take a good look at those. So thank you Enjoy. so much. That That's just the greatest news. I <laughs> forgot where I was. Uh, so uh, next, I we are going to go into executive session. And I would like Stephanie to please read the motion. Madam President, I move that the board recess into an executive session to discuss the following subjects, negoci negotiations. The justification for this executive session is to discuss employer-employee negotiations, whether or not in consultation with the representative or representatives of the body or agency pursuant to the exception for employer-employee negotiations under KOMA. We are inviting Larry. And we would like to invite Larry Mears, please. The open meeting will resume in the Board of Education Community Room at? 645. 645. Uh, may I have a second on that, please? A second. Thank you so much. All in favor, raise your right hand. <laughs> Thank you so much. Let's go into executive session. Stephanie. Yes. And we're back in. Um, next on our agenda tonight is our personnel action. And Stephanie, I'm going to let you have the luxury of okay. reading the pages, please. All right. The first, um, how do I word it? Personnel I listing. I move to accept the following resignations. Jenny Furman, 10-month secretary, Atchison Middle School, effective May 31st, 2023. Rhonda Gierstorf, 12-month secretary, Atchison Elementary School, effective May 31st, 2023. 
Bailey Funk, Spirit Sponsor, Atchison Middle School, effective at the end of the 2022-2023 school year. Danielle Lukanoff, fourth grade teacher, Atchison Elementary School, effective at the end of the 22-23 school year. Danielle Lukanoff, fourth grade team leader, AES, and volleyball assistant coach, AHS, effective at the end of the 22-23 school year. Kristen Johansson, third grade teacher, AES, effective at the end of the 22-23 school year. Mark Felvis, Associate Principal and Activities Director, AHS, effective June 30th, 2023. Jessica Johnson, Assistant Site Manager, Food Service, AES, effective April 28th, 2023. Josh Rebant, Assistant Football Coach, AHS, effective at the end of the 22-23 school year. Misty Earls, Library Media Specialist, AES, effective at the end of the 22-23 school year. Angie Gray, third grade team leader, AES, effective at the end of the 22-23 school year. Thank you so much. Any discussion on any of those? Seeing none, all in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you so much. Next is our employment recommendations. I move to accept the following employment recommendations. Shelby Myers, first grade teacher, AES, effective July 1st, 2023. Lori Adams, associate principal, AMS, Effective July 1st, 2023. Hung Tai Lee Yoke, physical education teacher, AES, effective July 1st, 2023. Blaine Clardy, associate principal, Atchison High School, effective July 1st, 2023. Kylea Owens, third grade teacher, AES, um, effective July 1st, 2023. Awesome. We have a second, please. A second. Thank you so much. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you so much. Passes unanimously. Transfers? I move to accept the following transfers for the 2023-2024 school year. Andrew Gerlach, third grade teacher, AES, to fifth grade teacher, AES, effective July 1st, 2023. Allie Weedle, eighth grade special education teacher, AMS, to low incident special education teacher, AMS, effective July 1st, 2023. Second. I'll second. Thank you, Sally. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, raise your right hand. Passes unanimously. Supplementals? I move to accept the following supplementals for the 2023-24 school year. Andrew Gerlach, fifth grade lunch supervisor, fall and spring, AES. Rachel Wagamuth, assistant volleyball coach, Rule 10, AHS. Jeff Wallace, assistant football coach, Rule 10, AHS. Angie Gray, fifth grade team leader, AES. Wait a minute. Go ahead. Just for the record, Jeff Wallace would not be um, Rule 10. He's a certified employee, so we can take that off. So take off Rule 10. Okay. Okay. So I'd entertain a second with that Rule 10 taken off as presented. I'll second. Thank you so much. Any discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you so much. Passes unanimously. Can we do all the summer in one reading or do they have to be? So from for the summer, ESY, teachers, paras, general education, we'll just read it on. Thank you. I move to accept the following ESY teachers for the summer 2023. Kristen Bertrand, Charles Semenko, Peyton Niggis, Danae Richards, Katrina Streitenberger, Alicia Cobley, Alyssa Feltz, Sandy Snowden, Joni Dunn, Michelle Hess, Diane Wesley Unruh. Do I need to specify the gen? Okay. All right. For general general education, Summer Learning Academy, Summer 2023, Stephanie Affill, coordinator. General education teachers, Summer Learning Academy, Summer 2023, Annie Shalelvin, Trisha Regan, Kim Duncan, Casey Henderson, Amy Wilson, Megan Bird, Amy Sieber Morgan, Angie Gray, Andrew Gerlock, Winnie Harris, Megan Metis, Jennifer Smith, Elliot Smith, Kylie Coatman, Rhonda McDaniel, Misty Wilson, JC Niggis, Leslie Harness Smith, Deja Coleman, Paul Ogle, Caitlin Bushbauser, Lauren Smith, Tracy Jones, Sarah Bland, Ruth Kunkel, 
general education paraeducators for the Summer Learning Academy for 2023, Renee Connor, Kelsey Rumbly, Kayla Ross, Jennifer Friedel, Olivia Denton, Summer Substitutes, Leah Martin, Marjorie Meidel, Lindsay Hodap, Liz Harris, Jason Curley, Summer Food Service, Ashley Calloway, Laura Coyle, Rhonda Schneider, Summer Maintenance, Steve Watkins, Russell Gaddis, Steve Barnett, Mary Stewart for June only, Melissa Tadlock, Donovan Tadlock, and Donovan Don, Donnie Tadlock the third. Awesome. That's a lot of names. May I have a second on that, please? I'll second. Thank you so much. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you so much. Passes unanimously. Um, just an announcement to uh, my fellow board members, our June special meeting is June 29th at 12 o'clock. And that'll just be the self-evaluation for all of us. So uh, see you then. Uh, any other words of, okay. All right. Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Thank you, Sean. May I have a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Sally. All in favor? Raise your right hand. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening, everyone. Thank you for coming.